Dan saya akan teruskan dengan negara membangun memainkan peranan besar dalam kerjasama ekonomi digital serantau. Dan ini bagi memastikan amalan terbaik dalam dicontohi dan dilaksanakan di peringkat negara. Digital Cooperation Organization antara organisasi yang menggerakkan kerjasama dengan negara ahli dalam konteks ekonomi digital. Laporannya bersama editor Najib Aruf. Okey, di World Economic Forum ini sudah pasti tumpuan digital itu adalah secara besar diberikan sejak beberapa episod yang lepas dalam negara awal ini kita membawakan tentang AI dan juga beberapa perkara yang lain tapi juga kita ingin melihat bagaimanakah trend ekonomi digital khususnya diangkat dan juga dibawa ke peringkat yang lebih tinggi dan juga untuk memahami perbezaan antara Global North dan Global South dalam konteks tersebut kerana perbezaan adalah berlaku tapi apakah yang perlu dilaksanakan dalam konteks kerjasama itu yang saya bincangkan pada episod pada kali ini saya bersama dengan Secretary General Digital Cooperation Organization Dima Alia Yahya, uh, thank you so much for joining us. First well, of all, let's talk about us. yeah, let's talk about the organisation itself. Uh, what do you do and your members? Uh, I, I believe your members is from GCC countries and also South Africa. Can you explain about the organisation? Uh, definitely, the Digital Corporation Organisation has been established three years ago. Uh, the objective behind establishing the organisation is to help and support accelerate digital transformation. Uh, we're very proud that we represent 15 countries right now, mm. from Asia, Europe, and Africa, uh, represent. 800 million in population. So if we look at digital economy right now, the exponential growth of that digital economy expected to uh, uh, to contribute more than 70% of the global GDP by 2030. That's abundance of opportunities. Yeah. But with these opportunities comes a lot of challenges for the countries to transform very quickly to harness these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the agenda of digital transformation is huge from infrastructure to uh, policy reforms uh, uh, to data uh, as well as human capital development no country alone yeah. can do all of that transformation uh, so therefore they need a lot of investment and a lot of support consultancy as well dco is the platform to bring in governments private sector and civil society to co-create and co-design that transformation why reinvent the wheel if something is working in one nation, let's share it with the other nations. Also, let's open the markets and borders for startups, for uh, technology enterprises to cross border very easily and make technology available. That's the essence of the uh, DCO. It's very fantastic because, uh, and, and uh, I was informed that you have uh, the report as well, the digital economy uh, yes. uh, trends report. You can share this, some of the findings. Definitely. And, yeah. we, we just launched the uh, digital economy trends report uh, 2024 in Davos. Uh, yeah. Uh, this year. This uh, report is very unique. It touches not only on emerging technologies, but also what are the fundamental trends in digital economy as a whole. So we look at uh, uh, six main trends uh, and we go in depth in these trends and we provide the recommendations for not only governments, but also private sector on how can they address these trends and how can they get the best out of 2024. Uh, these trends that we have been, uh, that we identified and we have recommendations on goes from AI to cybersecurity uh, to uh, green economy as well as digital uh, uh, reality. We look at smart ecosystems as well and most importantly trust economy as well. Yeah. What are the challenges for these countries because under your organization for example we mm -hmm. have a diverse countries with different background yes. and different understanding of AI for instance and different infrastructure in that sense but what are the, some of the challenges highlighted from a by uh, the organizations mm -hmm. and how do these challenges being discussed and also you know, addressed by mm -hmm. your organization? Very good question. I think when after our analysis and seeing as you have rightfully mentioned the difference and diverse ecosystem that our uh, countries represent, mm -hmm. we found that what is collectively unique in terms of a challenge is capacity building, yes. which is the infrastructure to observe the AI and to grow unicorns and in, in innovations in AI. So therefore, we have been working uh, heftily with our member countries to create the right infrastructure in terms of uh, either hardware when it comes to supercomputers or also chips as well. And also, what are the solutions that we can make available to AI, AI professionals in our member countries to start creating IPs and local content and commercializing that IP? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main challenges uh, 
faced by many of the startups around the globe actually yeah. uh, the financing and we're talking about uh, uh, alternative financing as well yes from, uh, especially from the global south area mm -hmm. right but how do these kind of things being discussed by organizations mm -hmm. not just discussed I'm pretty sure this has uh, that that's something concrete being discussed and also being uh, done by the organization when it comes to financing and understanding the need of financing to support the startup uh, oh, from these definitely. countries yeah um, you know, we look at it from another angle, which is how can we enable the startups not only from a financing perspective, but also from the ease of doing business yes. and expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the startups can go, okay, in, in one nation cannot grow only independently. They have to expand to reach to more consumers yeah. for them to grow mm -hmm. uh, uh, and return economically on the, uh, on the nation. Therefore, we have been working uh, on several initiatives like the Startup Passport, which eases that expansion as well as a unified startup act between our member countries that will help and support uh, uh, that digital trade uh, very easily between countries. When it comes to financing, this is where we help and support in connecting the dots. We bring in the financial institutions and we make the make them available for our uh, our startups. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate that our members uh, collectively we have more than 3,700 startups, wow. and uh, enabling them means a fruitful and uh, um, and uh, increasing uh, prosper digital economy going forward. Yeah, in Malaysia we have this debate about creating more unicorns. But of course. from the 3,000 numbers that you mentioned just now, how many or in terms of percentage that you can share mm -hmm. that's going to reach to that uh, well, unicorn level? Yeah. We see great potential. Uh, we see in... Um, uh, as our our uh, analysis, we see 11% of the wow. number that we have is uh, on the track of scaling uh, mm -hmm. and becoming unicorns if we provide them with the right support and, and the right help, either from a, a, a regulation and policy perspective or the financing or also uh, uh, enabling them with the technology and the human resources that they need. Um, we see countries, uh, the likes of uh, Nigeria, where all Africa has seven unicorns. Uh, five of these unicorns come wow. from Nigeria. Hmm. We see Saudi Arabia, who last year just alone announced two unicorns, and they are the first in, uh, now when it comes to um, uh, venture capital. Uh, so we do see that traits. We truly believe that our member countries are in the right track when it comes to growing their technology and innovation startups. Yeah. As of our Malaysia, we have only one unicorn, and we would will, we will like to have, I think, five by uh, for the next few years. Maybe we can learn something for the organization as well. And last but not least, you have 15 countries under your organization, yes. and you plan to add more countries, especially definitely. from uh, Southeast Asia, I believe. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. We would love also any like-minded nations that are willing to contribute as well as willing to, to, to transform as well. We are open to discuss. Definitely, Malaysia is one of them. Uh, we are talking to ASEAN and having partnerships also with organizations like ASEAN and like other global organizations. All right, Dima, thank you so much for joining us. I know you are, Dima is so busy. We tried to get her yesterday, but she is only available today. Thank you so much. No, I really thank appreciate you for your having time. Us. Uh, itu adalah bagaimana kita melihat uh, teknologi ataupun uh, ekonomi digital dan juga organisasi seperti ini amat penting kerana kalau kita bergerak secara bersama, ini kita bincangkan dalam banyak sesi dalam jenawan dan sebagainya. Cabaran bergerak sendirian adalah susah kerana kapasiti itu tidak ada. Jadi, uh, organisasi seperti ini akan membantu kita untuk push further uh, ke arah yang lebih tinggi. Baik. Uh, itu laporan untuk uh, World Economic Forum 2024 untuk Negawani. Uh, banyak lagi laporan yang kami kasihkan juga di laman web kami astronomy.com.